Today is going to be an absolute beautiful day in Pittsburgh and we don't want to spend the entire time putting in a shower. So we're going to show you how to do a Schluter shower installation. This is going to be part one. So this video will be part one and we'll share with you how to install the purple board inside the shower and put this on the stud walls and then waterproof it using the Curdy membrane. This is an approved method by Schluter. It's super rock solid. And then in part two, we'll show you how to put the shower pan in. But let's go inside. We'll show you how to put the purple board on the walls and waterproof it using Curdy. So before we go ahead and start putting up our drywall for our substrate for the Schluter shower, one of the most important things you can do to make your life easier is to make sure that all these studs are in a line and that nothing is out of whack. Like right here, we got about a, a 16th. I'm not gonna be concerned about that. That's not that big of a deal. That's not gonna create too much of an issue when I thin set. It's when you get to about, you know, 3 sixteenths to a quarter inch, that's when you're gonna to wanna to try to fur this out, shim it, you know, or plane it down or sister new studs on it. A lot of times sistering new studs on it is a little bit easier to make up that difference. But always check your wall to see how flat it really is. Cause that's just gonna make your towel work and everything else a lot easier. The other thing you wanna pay attention to is to make sure that all your studs are 16 inches or less. So, you know, all these are about 16 inches. You can tell this is smaller than 16. We got 16 center there. And you can obviously see right here that we don't. This is 24 inches away. So we need to have another stud in this area. And that's just basically for support of the backer board. So we'll measure this and put a stud. So we're just going to put some wood blocking in for a grab bar. I'd say typically you're going to be between 36 inches and 42 inches for a grab bar. Keep in mind that we're going to have a shower floor, so we'll be probably coming up about another inch and a quarter, inch and a half thick. So we'll just put this, I'd say around 39 inches. And this will allow us, when we put a grab bar in there, to actually grab into something decent. Um, anytime that you put a grab bar in, you should really try to get some blocking for it. Two three-inch deck screws were used on each side of these 2x4s for a rock-solid insulation. Now, you could also use a 2x6, 2x8, or a 2x10. Because we know the exact height and we're recording this, we use 2x4s. We'll go ahead and put our half-inch drywall up. 48 inches. All three of these walls are interior walls, so they don't require any type of insulation or vapor barrier because the curry membrane will serve as a vapor barrier. So when you do the drywall on the floor, you can give yourself a little bit of room because you've got the shower pan that you'll be installing after the walls. So right now I'm reading 33 and a half inches. If I just made that 33 and a quarter I'll make sure that I'll be able to fit this in and not have to fight it. So give yourself a little bit of room. It doesn't have to be completely tight to the floor. Just be able to, you know, if you even if you kept it up a half inch off the floor, and it'd keep you from having to fight it. A flat bar kind of helps you hold that up when you're installing drywall too. A Milwaukee screw gun was used to speed up portions of this drywall installation. All the screws were placed such that they were 12 inches along the 16 inch on center stud. So screws were spaced every 12 inches and that's important. Okay, so we'll just measure this one. So we got uh, 15 and five eighths. And then we're gonna come down inch and three eighths. And we'll just use a little spade bit. You obviously cut this out beforehand if you wanted to measure this 
and cut a circle or you can use a roto zip which is what I'm going to use and we'll just go 39 inches and over 15 and a half. This first piece of drywall on the plumbing wall was hung using two drywall screws. We had to put it in place so that we could cut a hole for the Hansgrohe roughing valve. Okay, so 39 and a half with our center of that valve. And 15 and a half this way. We'll just use our roto zip here. We simply plunged the Dremel roto zip blade into the center of that Hansgrohe eye box and then turned it counterclockwise. This will help you make a perfect circle around the Hansgrohe eye box. Now, it's really, really important to set the depth of that blade such that it's only about a half inch to three quarters of an inch inside that Hansgrohe eye box. Then we continued to set the rest of the drywall. We just needed to get two measurements, one at the top and one at the bottom here to make sure that the drywall piece was nice and tight with our trim. You can also use an impact driver with a dimple bit to make sure that all of the drywall screws are flush or sub flush. One of the things you want to pay attention to, kind of a preliminary thing with framing, is that you want to make sure that you have uh, framing behind where your glass doors are going to be. If you're going to do a hinged door that's going to swing open, it's, it's almost imperative that you have another stud within the wall or in the middle of your curb. Right now there's a, basically we have a, two studs here that span out about three inches. And we're going to be doing a sliding door so we're not too overly concerned about having wood blocking behind the sliding door. But this is something that you want to think about when you're putting up this drywall is to make sure that you have blocking behind the shower doors so that when you screw in your channel, you have something to actually screw into. We're fine here because we've got about three inches. Our curb is going to be to from the edge of this to about four and a half inches. So we have plenty of room to anchor our screws into this stud but it's something to think about in case you had a scenario where you didn't have any blocking okay so we're going to set the membrane on the walls here we're going to use the schluter all set most important thing is to pay attention to the water ratio that they have on the bag they have two different settings here one for setting membranes and one for setting tile so the setting tile or setting the membrane is going to add a lot more water. So we have basically 7.1 to 8 liters of water and then the, uh, the tile is going to be a lot less, 5.5 to 6.5 quarts. I'm sorry, 7.5 quarts to 8.5 quarts of water for the membrane. So always pour your water in first. We're going to only set, you're going to, we're only going to use a half a bag. So we're going to have 4.25 quarts of water. Schluter All Set was mixed at 300 RPMs for five minutes per the directions. It was allowed to slake for 10 minutes, so it just sat there in a the bucket for 10 minutes. And then we mix it again for another three minutes. It's really important to follow the directions for All Set or any thin set mortar for that matter. So I'm pretty excited to show you this big roll of Schluter that we're going to be putting in here. It makes things a lot easier. Uh, it's a 79 inch roll. And the idea of this is to be able to just do one continuous piece of curdy all the way around the shower. So there's no seams, there's not going to be any additional taping in the corners. It's just like basically hanging one big piece of wallpaper all the way around the shower and making it waterproof. So really, really nice, makes it a lot faster and easier. Uh, this is a 79 inch roll. So Schluter basically recommends in a shower area to have your waterproofing up to about 80 inches high. And then the rest of it, they're not really concerned with. And typically that's above, like this is your shower head right here. Typically uh, that's 80 inches right there. So typically you don't really need waterproofing above the shower head because there's really not gonna be any water saturation above the shower area. But when we took out this fiberglass shower system, you know, it, it was it was about seven or six feet tall. 
So we wanted to put a new shower port in, so we cut up above it and put this drywall up. So what we'll end up doing is after we get the, the sheeting up there, we're gonna use the curdy band just to cover over that seam and make sure that this is a nice transition for your tile. Uh, it's also gonna help waterproof right up against your, the shower port. So keep in mind, this was a fiberglass shower that we tore out. We ended up extending the cut of the drywall out to be able to change the shower arm. And so we're actually gonna be waterproofing a little bit above what Schluter recommends. Schluter recommends 80 inches. We'll probably just cover up the seam with the band. So one of the things, this corner bead typically ends up getting built out because of the amount of drywall mud it takes to create the corner. And we're trying to keep this corner so I don't have to do any additional work on the outside. But as you can see, I have basically like an eighth inch divot from the outside of the corner to here. So this would be, like if you were to drywall this, you would fill this all in and, and smooth that out. What we'll end up doing is when we do the tile work, we'll be just using additional thin set to make the wall straight here. So it's gonna take a little bit more work to do that. Um, the waterproofing is gonna help build this out a little bit, but just keep in mind, when you have a corner bead, it's not always gonna be completely straight and flat with the edge of the corner. You're gonna to have to do a little bit of additional thin set building when you set the tile. And we're gonna be using bullnose for the edging. So it actually, having a, a seam that will go all the way straight down will make this transition a little bit easier. But when we get into the tile work, We'll, uh, we'll address that issue with a little bit of additional thin set. Okay, so we're gonna start from one side and work our way all the way around. I put my laser up here just for reference of height. It'll help make sure I keep this straight because if you start to angle, you know, this is exaggeration, but if you start to angle your curdy, you're gonna end up having a big problem on this other side. So it's kind of like hanging wallpaper. You kind of want to have, some kind of a level mark to go off of and make sure that this sits straight. Now keep in mind, at the bottom, you're gonna have your, your base, uh, the base that will come up about an inch and a half. So you've got plenty of room to keep this off of the ground. And I would, I would recommend keeping this at least a half inch off the ground, just in case something isn't 100% level and that you have a little extra room so you don't have to cut this. So we'll go ahead and get started. Basically applying thin set on one wall at a time. You don't want to spread the thin set everywhere because you wouldn't have enough time for this. This will end up drying on you. So just do one wall at a the section at a time. First thing is to, to just take a damp sponge, wipe down this, the drywall, and this will keep the thin set from drying out immediately. And it helps you glide that thin set over the substrate. Also get some of the dust and things off as well. So as you can see, the, the thin set is pretty soupy. That's what you need to adhere the, the curdy to the board. So you want to make sure this isn't too thick. If it's too thick, it ends up having a hard time bonding. So this is a fairly soupy consistency. And what I recommend is just using the flat side of the trowel to embed the thin set and then trowel it afterwards. All set was applied to this first wall with the flat side of the trowel first. So a good layer of all set mortar was applied with the flat side of the trowel first on the entire wall. Then we used the not side of that same trowel to apply more all set. You want a really good layer of thin set on top of the drywall. And by the way, the curdy trowel was used for this installation. And apply another layer and do directional troweling. Just making sure that all your ridges are, are full. To make sure that you have the right amount of coverage. Okay, 
so. Just pay attention to our levelness, make sure that it stays nice and straight. And you kind of just want to push this into the corner. and keep one side kind of open. And this is basically to keep any air bubbles from developing. So just work your way. So I'm just using a six inch putty knife to make sure that this is nice and flat and to get any air bubbles out from underneath of the curry membrane. The nice thing with the Curdy wide roll is there are no seams that you have to fill. So there's no seams on this shower wall that we have to go back and waterproof. It's super quick to install. Okay, and if you want to check some coverage, just make sure that that looks, you know, when you start seeing these kind of uh, markings on the drywall where you can see how it's kind of attached to the fleece, that means you got some pretty good coverage. If you see any bald spots, of the drywall when you pull that back that means there's not enough coverage but since it's kind of all equally covered I would say that's good coverage we'll go ahead and cut the excess off against this trim It's really important to apply the damp sponge to the surface of the drywall. That way, the moisture from the thin set mortar won't be wicked out of the mortar prematurely, and that will prevent the mortar from setting up or curing too fast. So, again, we applied the thin set using the flat side of this curdy trowel, and then more thin set was applied using the notched side of the trowel. So, in this case, the curdy trowel is a 1 8 by 1 8 inch square notch trowel and you want all the trowel ridges to face the same direction also known as directional troweling and the reason for that directional troweling is so that when the curdy membrane goes over top of the thin set mortar and is compressed it's easier for the air to escape from the trowel ridges so again use directional troweling all right so it's going to be important that you get this tight into the corner using your potty knife. Because you don't want this bellowing out and causing any problems with your towel work. So try to get that as tight as you can. And roll it out, pay attention to your level line. Make sure everything's still rolling properly. And then once you get that corner established, just pull this out and just kind of feather it out like a blanket. Make sure you have a minimal amount of air underneath of this. And then you can just use your putty knife to squeeze out any additional thin set and air pockets. The 
could feel these air pockets pretty easily. So just make sure this feels all nice and flat. Void here between the, the corner bead and the drywall here. So there's really nothing there. Make sure that corner is nice and tight before you roll it out. Use your putty knife to push that into the corner. Cut around your valve. You don't have to be too accurate with this because you're going to have, you'll be able to seal against this with uh, the curdy fix, but try to make it as tight as you can. You just want to make sure that this curdy bonds to this outside corner, but also doesn't stick out the side of that corner because you're going to be grouting that tile against this. Okay, and we'll just do a roll curdy band across the top here, just to kind of fill in that between the two areas and make it a little bit stronger. Curdy band application begins by applying thin set mortar to both the curdy membrane and the drywall, first using the flat side of the curdy trowel, then the notched side of the curdy trowel, again using directional troweling, so having all the trowel ridges face the same direction. And the reason for that is when you go to apply the curdy band over top of all this thin set, the air will be able to escape out between the curdy membrane, the curdy band membrane, and the drywall and the thin set. So again, we're just applying with the flat side first, and then we're using directional traveling second, and then applying one continual piece of curdy band over all three sections of this drywall and the curdy membrane. That's the way to install it. So again, make sure this corner is nice and tight before you wrap it around. Thank you. 
Using a six inch putty knife really makes this process very easy and straightforward. And again, you wanna make sure that the corners, the two corners here are nice and flat because if they're not flat, that will interfere with the tiling process later on. So make sure that all of the thin set mortar is compressed as flat as possible between the curdy band and the drywall. And then here, we're just cutting a slit into the curdy band so it can fit over top of the shower arm that will be in the shower area. You don't have to be 100% accurate on this because there's still a pipe flange that we're gonna be putting around this. So even if it's wildly inaccurate, it's not a big deal. As you can see, we're really paying attention at the flatness of this curdy band over top of both the curdy membrane and the existing drywall and using a sponge to knock down any of the existing thin set and clean off the existing thin set that's on top of both the curdy membrane and the drywall that's above it. It's really important to do that. And then here we're just tucking in our corners even more and cleaning off any of the excess thin set that is over top of the shower pan area. Okay, in the Schluter kit, it comes with a shower valve, basically a uh, a shower valve cover on here. But obviously, as you can see, that's not going to fit on this type of shower valve. Uh, not a big deal because since we use the Hans Grohe eye box, we're just going to seal around the edge of this with uh, the Curdy fix. So it'll make already make a nice tight seal, but this is something that would be great for different valves that don't have this type of waterproof feature. So this will come with the drain kit. It also will come with a pipe flange. Which will allow me to have it for the shower port. So we'll go ahead and set this on there. doesn't really matter which way this goes, but this is a nice little shower seal around your, your valve cover. This is the Schluter Curdy Trowel. It's a 1 8 inch by 1 8 inch square notch trowel. This is what we use to apply the Curdy membrane to the drywall. Then we used Curdy Fix between the Hans Grohe eye box and the Curdy membrane. Curdy Fix will provide a watertight and waterproof seal between the Curdy membrane and this plastic portion of the eye box. We used our finger to tool that joint and it's really important to make this joint as flat as possible against the eye box in the curdy membrane so that it doesn't interfere with the setting of the tile later on. But this is a really great option for waterproofing. As you saw, it's super quick to install the purple board and the waterproof it using the curdy membrane. The next step is to install the Schluter shower pan. And we're gonna show you how to do that step by step. But if you're doing a custom bathroom installation or a custom shower, make sure you check out bathroomrepairtutor.com. That's where we have over 200 videos in our video library and walk you step by step through many different types of installations, including the tile work. So make sure you visit bathroomrepairtutor.com. All right, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.